Hey everyone, welcome back. In our previous video, I showed you how to create shader based transitions using Phaser, using custom fragment shaders to create cool visual effects. In this video, we're building on that idea and recreating some classic Pokemon style wipe effects like horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and more. But instead of creating separate code for each shader effect, we'll be applying them all with a single shader that uses a texture to create the same dramatic visual effect. This makes it super flexible. Just change the texture and you get a whole new effect. If you haven't seen the previous video, or if you're interested in learning more about shaders and how to get started with Phaser 3, check out the videos linked on the screen now. There'll also be links down in the description to these videos on my channel. In this video, we're going to recreate several iconic wipe styles using just gradient textures. We're gonna have this horizontal wipe, a vertical wipe, a diagonal wipe, these closing bars, and then finally this trapped effect. These effects were famously used in Pokemon Battle intros, and they're surprisingly simple to replicate. So instead of creating all these custom shaders through code, we're going to create one unique shader that allows us to pass a custom texture to it, and then based on that texture, we can create those unique effects we just saw. This technique is inspired by an excellent case study that can be found on GitHub here. There'll be a link down in the description to this case study. The key idea is this. We're going to use a grayscale texture as a control mask. Each pixel in our gradient has a brightness value between 0 and 1. And in our fragment shader, we're going to take a sample from our texture and get that brightness value, and we're going to have some cutoff value. If the value of that pixel is less than that cutoff value, then we're going to paint black to our image. If our value is greater than or equal to our cutoff, then we're going to use the original pixel color of our image. What this would look like is for our image, if our cutoff is zero, then all of our pixels should be visible. If our value is 1 or 100%, then none of the original pixels should be visible. But if our value is now something like 50%, when we look at our gradient for our cutoff value, any brightness value that is less than 0.5, so our black and grays here, we're going to paint black to our screen. Any value that is greater than or equal to 50 or 0.5, then we paint out that original value. And so as we update that progress or our cutoff, that allows us to create this smooth animation here. And so now, with that one fragment shader, if we use that logic, all we need to do is change our gradient image, and if we apply that same texture to our fragment shader, we can create really unique effects like this, all without having to change our code. And so this is really powerful because before, we had to code each of our shaders by hand, and it becomes very tedious, and now we just need to create these unique images and we can use them to create these cool effects. If you'd like to follow along with the video, in the description, there's going to be a link to the starting project source code for this video. So for our starting project code, I took our code from our last video where we created our Pokemon battle-like scene transitions using custom shaders in Phaser 3. I took that code and I added some additional functionality to it. First, I updated our phaser scene, and I updated our code to load in some new assets that we'll be using for our project. These new assets, these are going to be our textures that we'll be applying to our shader. Next, I created a brand new fragment shader and a new PostFX pipeline that uses that shader. So under our gradient texture PostFX pipeline, this is where we'll add in our, all of our new code for our new fragment shader that we'll be creating. Currently, our fragment shader is set up so we can receive a few custom variables, and all we're doing right now is we're just rendering out our original texture. And so now down in our pipeline, it's currently set up to allow us to pass an additional texture to our fragment shader. So now in our fragment shader, we'll be able to use that texture to create those unique battle scene transitions, all based on our gradient image that we pass in. And then finally, I update our tweak paint integration to expose some of our properties for our new pipeline. So now if we run our project locally, once it starts up, under tweak pane, we should see all of our previous settings for our various shaders, and we'll have a new option called our gradient texture. So now for this new option, this is going to point to our new shader in our gradient texture post effects pipeline. So now for our shader, if we click on play transition, nothing should happen, because currently all we're doing in our shader is we're just running out our original texture color. 
if we comment out this line of code here and then uncomment our other line of code, now if we come back to our game, what we should see right away is now our texture that we're passing to our fragment shader, we're rendering out just our texture. So now on tweak pane, if we change our gradients, we're going to see that we switch between our various textures that we've loaded into our phaser game. And so now for each of these gradient textures, we're going to add in our code now to use this to create our battle scene transition. So now for our custom shader, for us to create our custom animation, we need to implement our logic where we're going to take our gradient texture and we're going to take some value and then compare each of our pixels against that value. And so we just need to take a sample from our gradient and whatever the color value or our brightness is from our gradient texture, if that value is less than our cutoff or our progress value that will pass, then we want to paint the color black to our canvas element. Otherwise, we just want to paint out the original color from the original texture. And so what this will look like in our fragment shader is we currently have a uniform float called uCutOff. And so this is a custom variable where we're going to pass a dynamic value from our pipeline. And so in our parent class, our custom pipeline, we currently set our progress value, which is a number between 0 and 1, and we're setting it to that uniform on our on pre-render method for our pipeline. That's going to make that value available to us in our code. And so now all we need to do in our main method in our fragment shader is we just need to implement this logic here. So I'm just going to copy this code. We'll come over here, we'll paste it. It's so now to implement this. First, we need to take a sample from our gradient texture. So for that, we're going to make a new float variable. We're going to call this grad for gradient. We're going to set equal to our texture 2D. And so we're going to reference our U gradient texture with our out text coordinate. And now we're just going to grab the red value from that. So now we just need to do our if conditions. We're going to do if, if our gradient color is less than our uniform, so our U cutoff, then we want to render out the color black. So we're going to reference our GL frag color. Now for our color to render out black, we can do a vector four. And now we can do 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0.0 for our RGB values. And we'll do 1.0 for our alpha. If it's not less than that cutoff value, we'll do our else block. And now we just want to render out the original color from our original texture. So we're going to copy this line of code here. We're going to paste it. Now let's remove this pseudo code. All right, so we save and come back over to our game. From our drop down, let's go to our gradient texture. And so now if we click our play transition button, we should now see our nice custom animation play. So when we click our play transition button, what this is doing is this is updating our progress value here from a value between zero all the way up to one. And this progress value, this is being passed to our custom pipeline and being set as our U cutoff uniform. So now as our value updates, our cutoff value keeps increasing, which makes more and more of our screen turn black until eventually we hit to the value one and now our whole screen is black. And so now if we try changing our gradient type, if we play our transition, now we have a brand new animation and all we did is we just pulled in a different gradient. So if we do this wipe vertical, by using this image here, that creates this effect here where we have this curtain fall. Likewise, if we do these closed bars, all we're doing here is we're just using this image here to create that animation effect. And for all of these, we're just using the same block of code here to create those effects. And then finally, if we choose our trap gradient, we can create these really cool animations like this. And all we did is we just updated our gradient to use an image like this. And so one thing to note about the code is when we took a sample from our gradient image, all we used was the red channel. The reason we did this is anytime we have a grayscale image, our red, green, and blue channels, they're all going to have the same value for each pixel. And so no matter which channel we pull here, our R, our G, or a B, they're all going to give us the same results. And so even though we're not using this for our scene transitions, this technique is super versatile. You can use it for screen wipes, intros, UI effects, or any moment you want to add some visual flair all by using a single reusable shader. And so that's how you can create a Pokemon style wipe effect in Phaser using a single shader and a few custom gradient textures.
If you haven't seen my earlier videos on shader transitions, check it out for more foundational info on setting up custom pipelines in Phaser. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and drop a comment with any shader ideas or effects you'd like to see next. And if you've been digging these Phaser tutorials and want to support the channel, I've set up a Ko-fi page. Even a one-time coffee helps me keep making more videos like this. You'll find the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for watching.